Welcome back. It's time for the roundtable. And this week in business news, many of the big stories centered around the issue of innovation. One big company here is splitting up to find new ways to better innovate, while one of the biggest customers is headed west. The Pentagon seems to think simply going to Silicon Valley is the solution to get past government bureaucracy to think big and out of the box. But the industry bible for the tech crowd is casting its spotlight here, saying Silicon Valley should be taking a new look at why Washington has become tech cool. Here to break it all down, the reporter everyone is following for the breakup news, Jill Toro of the Washington Business Journal, and the man this week fo featured in the Washington Post making his case for why the government just doesn't get it when it comes to D.C. tech potential. Jonathan Aberman, our regular contributor and named this month by Washingtonian as a D.C. tech titan. Welcome to you both, <laughs> but you know, it's always juicy to get breakup news uh, yeah. on a weekend, so yeah. tell us who's breaking up and why. So Computer Sciences Corporation um, is breaking into two. They are going to uh, be two publicly traded companies, uh, one focusing on federal government, the other on commercial and international business. Business. We've seen this coming. They've, uh, for about three years now, undergone a, a turnaround, have kind of hit, after cutting costs everywhere, they, they had huge problems actually growing revenue. So this is their solution. And we've that. seen the prong prom king and the prom queen break up before. We've seen other big contractors in town oh, yeah. take yeah. a similar approach. What do they get out of it? That Wall Street has been down, you know, breathing down their neck to try and show that they can better innovate. Mm -hmm on the public side of the company that will now be and on the uh, commercial side, yeah. what are the gains? Well, the gains are for one thing, they will tell you that they can target the market. market. One, one division won't drag down the other, but a lot of this has to do with Wall Street and what Wall Street's comfortable with. They tend to like pure play and mm -hmm. they will look at, at a government contractor and they'll understand their competitors, they'll understand their clients and, um, and it makes more billion likely billion to dollar company. They there. seem to be doing pretty well without Wall Wall Street telling them how to do their job. But, but they, oh. to some degree, weren't doing great. They did great at cost cutting, which Wall Street loved. So then stock, their stock went way up. And then all of a sudden, revenue hit a wall and now has been declining. Yeah. Jonathan, Jill well, in her reporting has certainly made the case for why this is a smart move. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you know, I agree with her. I think I, I'm going to talk move. to her before every breakup and maybe even before <laughs> I enter the relationship. <laughs> yeah, if we had a relationship advice from Jill, we'd all be better off. Yeah, I, right. think that's right. I think so. Yeah. What's your take on this? Uh, great relationship advice. No, Wall Street hates government contracting. And as an industry and the reason being is because the government it keeps trying to squeeze the margins narrower and narrower so if you're in a if you're in a cost plus business like a Lockheed Martin or SAIC and so forth or it's not a great business to be in compared to being a tech business yeah. boy did you serve up his beef this, yeah. this week and really we're you buddies know, you know yeah. That. yeah but th this isn't just your cause of the week this has been no, your right. cause for quite some time mm. you are someone who's trying to bridge the divide between the venture capital world the tech world and the government contracting world yeah. You've even set up a, a nonprofit organization that does that very thing in addition to all the other hats you wear. Mm -hmm. So your op-ed this week in the Washington Post says to the Pentagon, why are you going to Silicon Valley? They're going to set up shop. They're going to be there to try and find better ways to innovate. I say there's some arguments to be made for doing that. You say, but wait a second. Tell hey, us the so, but, but wait a second. Well, the wait a second is... The reason why the Pentagon and DHS are going to Silicon Valley is because they know that they need more innovation, and they absolutely do. The problem or the issue is that you don't go to a party where people don't want you to be there. <laughs> Silicon Valley doesn't need or care about the federal government. Oh, come on, they always want money, though. Oh, no, listen, but Silicon Valley suffers collective amnesia. Silicon Valley exists today because of the Pentagon, the 60s and 70s, but forget about that for a moment. Okay, make the case then, like, in QTEL, the CIA's little venture capital so arm, that's actually been quite successful. It's been pretty successful, but in QTEL is successful because this is a disguised contract vehicle, because it, the explain CIA... Explain this to our audience. So in QTEL was formed out, by CIA to literally have venture capital Money Actually, out what the CIA formed Incutel to get around the problems of contracting to be able to get at startups, and the candy they spread on the ground in front of them was venture capital money. They produced Google Earth and some other successful I, ventures. I'm not saying the keyhole and so forth wasn't successful. What I'm saying to you, what my op-ed piece said was, in order for the Pentagon to get innovation, they have to do two things. One, they have to change how they contract with the entrepreneurs. And what we know from our work at Tandem NSI, there are ways to do it. But you don't set up an office someplace far away. You work with the people here that know how to do it. And the second is, before I let you all speak, is that entrepreneurs here 
serve the public interest. Entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley really are interested in figuring out how to make the next unicorn to sell to Google. It's a different world, and the Pentagon should be here. And so, Julie, you've got the industry bible. Sorry, but I want to mention Recode. Recode is the bible for the uh, tech crowd, and they did a whole five-part series focusing on why DC is now tech, not just tech cool, but tech successful this week. What have they seen in Washington that the Pentagon fails to appreciate? Well, I think what the entire community would argue is that the problem is not with the lack of technology, it's with the way government buys. I mean, that's the problem. Mm. Technology innovation is not geographic in nature. Um, there are a few sources that even said that to me. It's not about Silicon Valley or necessarily Washington. Yeah. It is both places. That's the right. problem is that the way procurement functions, it completely um, it makes it almost impossible, not impossible, but extremely difficult for companies to get quickly in and sell their services. And that's what innovation we got to go to break. But, oh. it, but it's a great <laughs> read. I, I, I want to tell the audience to go back and read the op-ed you wrote because Thanks. you talk about ways to bridge that divide. Mm -hmm. And read the recode because they talk about 70, 1776 and some of the other players that are trying to let the Pentagon know, hey, we're here and we're going to be the best at innovating in the very area where you need. we got to go to break. We'll be right back with the pop quiz. Stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. Welcome back. It's time for the pop quiz. I'm going to play off the last segment. Jonathan, is Silicon Valley our competition when it comes to tech business? Or who is our competition out there? Which cities? Well, it's an international competition. It's everywhere. It's not just the United States. But here's the key. We have within our ability to take advantage of proximity of the federal government and the federal R&D establishment, which is where every new innovation comes from. We've got to take advantage of that. You've just been to Boston and other towns trying to be the tech startup towns, and you say we can take them all on. Yep. Jill, do you agree? I agree, partly because I think there's a lot of other towns that have no interest in doing business with government. Including Silicon Valley. Including Silicon Valley. Right. Particularly Silicon Valley. Yeah. I say we have to work to earn it. Durham, my old hometown, and others are taking us on. we got to play it. Well, thanks for joining us.